everyone and welcome back. So today we are talking about sentence fragments and this is part two of four short lectures on dependent clauses. Um, I put this picture in what is dependent personality disorder and what are its psychological causes because it sort of shows what that word dependent actually means, right? He cannot stand up by himself. He's dependent on his girlfriend. So let's review what a fragment is. Oh, I will say too, if you have not seen part one um, or if you didn't watch the set of lectures I did about sentence structures, I highly recommend it. If you're not in my class, just click on my name and my playlist for um, grammar errors and sentence structures should be right there for you. So anyway, um, let's go over a little bit what a fragment is. Just like this leaf with pieces missing, a fragment is a piece of a sentence. It is also known as an incomplete sentence. And I use both um, when talking to students and most teachers, I think, use them interchangeably. But if you have a teacher who just uses the word fragment or if you have one who just uses incomplete sentence, just know that they're the same thing. Unlike a simple sentence, a fragment is missing something. We're going to talk about simple sentences in a moment. But a fragment could be missing a subject or it could be missing a verb, or it could be missing both. So some examples, here are some missing a subject, swimming across the ocean and to travel. Both of those have the verb highlighted in red, but we don't have a noun doing the action. So what's swimming across the ocean? Who is traveling? So we add our subject to fix those fragments. Hannah was swimming across the ocean. Uh, that's difficult. <laughs> James wants to travel. Our subjects are there in blue. Sometimes they could be missing a verb. A red car needs a verb added to it. A red car is parked in my spot. So there the subject again in blue and the verb phrase is parked, which is added to that sentence to make it complete. Or it could be missing both. Around the corner, down the hall. I walked around the corner. The bathroom is down the hall. So here I is the subject, walked is the verb. Bathroom is the subject, is is our verb. Okay, so let's review dependent clauses. A simple sentence is also called an independent clause because it can stand on its own as a complete thought. This means it has both a subject and a verb. And like this woman who I also had in my previous presentation, um, strong and independent. She doesn't need anybody for help. She can stand on her own. In contrast, a dependent clause has a subject and a verb, but it also has a word in the beginning that turns it into an incomplete thought. And this word is called a subordinating conjunction. You don't really have to memorize that term, um, but I just like to tell you guys what it is. The word subordinating came from this Latin word um, subordinate, basically, right? It's the word we get subordinate from. It means somebody underneath you. In Latin, it was an officer of lower rank. <laughs> and conjunction, con means with and junct means join. So this is a word that puts the dependent clause underneath, um, so to speak, an independent clause. It can come before or after, but it has to be joined with an independent clause to be complete. It doesn't make sense and it can't stand on its own. Um, like this person, we need each other. Dependent clause is dependent on a simple sentence to be a complete thought. So when a dependent clause is by itself, um, again, in dialogue, when we talk to each other, it's a little bit different. How long are you going to be out until after you're asleep? Well, this sentence is actually a dependent clause. We have our dependent marker word, our subordinating conjunction right there with the word until. But because he's asked a question, because the other man is answering the question, probably if we were actually talking, there would be other things like eye contact and body language that would convey the meaning. But in writing, it's a tiny bit different. The dependent clause by itself is a type of sentence fragment. So that's what this man is using. He has an incomplete sentence. He has a subject and a verb. Look, you're asleep. 
But because it starts with this conjunction, this dependent marker word, some teachers might call it, there are unanswered questions, again, in writing. Possibly not as much if we're talking to somebody, but in writing there'd be unanswered questions and it would be very confusing. So the sentence is incomplete. So let's look at some other dependent clauses that leave unanswered questions. Because the money is gone, it's an incomplete sentence. Um, in order to get a promotion, after the car was demolished, even though my dog ran away, when the floodwaters came. Um, yes, like Kevin Hart, I am confused. Um, I don't quite know exactly what's going on here. So all of these dependent clauses on their own are incomplete sentences. Um, what do I need in order to get the promotion? That's quite important information. Even though my dog ran away, what? It's almost like we have like this ellipses, this that dot, 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 right? <laughs> There's some unanswered thing there. The thought is not fully complete. What happened when the floodwaters came? That's another one. So in order to answer our questions, we need to add an independent clause, also known as a simple or complete sentence. Because the money is gone, comma, we have to move. In order to get a promotion, Timon must work more hours. After the car was demolished, I cried. Even though my dog ran away, she eventually came home. When the floodwaters came, Scott's house was destroyed. Our questions have been answered. All of these examples are now complex sentences. So that's one of the reasons that I teach you guys the sentence structures before we look at the sentence errors. Um, we have the dependent clause, the comma, and then the independent clause. So this way, we've turned those dependent clause fragments into complete sentences. And Kevin Hart is happy. <laughs> We can also go the other way. You add the independent clause at the beginning or at the end, depending on how you want to fix it. It really is up to you. And I think I mentioned this before with complex sentences. This is one of the reasons that my brother is a very scientific kind of mind. He loves math and science and um, he he doesn't like English as much. I won't say he hates it, but he doesn't like it as much because he feels like the rules um, are kind of based also on what you feel. So there's not one way to fix something, but that's why I kind of like it. That's where my voice comes in and where I can have a little bit of creativity. So we had to move because the money is gone. Timon was work more hours in order to get a promotion. I cried after my car was demolished. My dog eventually came home, even though she ran away. Scott's house was destroyed when the floodwaters came. So it really, if you were fixing this in real life and you had a sentence like when the floodwaters came, it would be up to you. Do you want to have that first? When the floodwaters came, comma, Scott's house was destroyed. Or do you think this sounds better? Scott's house was destroyed when the floodwaters came. You notice... Um, no comma, I accidentally left the one up there, but it shouldn't be there. Let's cross that out. Um, no comma, and they're also complex sentences. They still have that dependent marker word, that conjunction there in the red every time. Um, and we have our independent clause in the yellow added to that dependent clause fragment. So they're all fixed. Um, they're all complete thoughts, and they're all complex sentences. So the complex sentence has an independent clause and a dependent clause. It starts with a conjunction like after, although, because, before, even though, or however. I washed the car after I came home. He went to see the doctor because he was sick. Even though she was late, she managed to complete the assignment. If we had just the part in green, it would be a dependent fragment. But the parts in blue, I washed the car, he went to see the doctor, she managed to complete the assignment, those could stand on their own by themselves. So what differences do you notice here? 
Um, another way to fix a dependent clause is to remove the conjunction. Here are the dependent clauses. As I was getting ready to go outside, while the snow whirled outside, unless we shoveled the driveway, because it snowed over two feet, before I went to bed on Friday, if I want to build an igloo. Now all of these we have instead of a period, um, we have the dot, dot, dot. But if we had a period, they would all be dependent clause fragments. Because, before, unless, while, and as. Those are our conjunction words. So another way to fix these words is to just take out that, con or, I'm sorry, another way to fix these fragments is just to take out that first word, to just delete the dependent clause word. And I mention this because I feel like a lot of people when they're teaching this, they teach the first way of adding the complete sentence or the simple sentence to the dependent clause. What I find in real life with students' papers and in my own writing when I make this mistake, because everybody makes mistakes sometimes, um, what I find in my own writing and with students' papers is that a lot of times I start a sentence with a conjunction word like this and then I kind of forget that I put it in there um, and or I overlook it. So just deleting that word makes the sentence complete. So here are now our independent clauses. I was getting ready to go outside, the snow whirled outside, we shoveled the driveway, it snowed over two feet, I went to bed on Friday, we wanted to build an igloo. Those are all complete thoughts, they're independent clauses. We have our subjects, snow, we, <laughs> it, if I can circle it, I, and another we down here. And then we have our verbs, was getting ready to go, whirled, shoveled, snowed, went, and wanted to build. Um, so all of those now have a subject and a verb and just getting rid of or deleting that dependent clause word um, did the trick. Turned it from a fragment into a complete sentence. So let's review. A fragment is another term for an incomplete sentence. Some fragments are incomplete because they are missing a subject, missing a verb, or missing both. Other fragments are incomplete because they begin with a conjunction which makes them dependent on another sentence to complete the thought, and those are called dependent clauses. Adding an independent clause to a dependent clause Adding an independent clause to a dependent clause, dependent clause turns our fragment into a complex sentence. So this example here, I survived a shipwreck, um, is our independent clause, although I lost all my luggage, is our dependent. I survived the shipwreck as I am Aquaman, in the green is the independent clause, and then in the black is that dependent clause. So now we have complex sentences. You can also just take out the conjunction and turn the fragment into a simple sentence, also known as an independent clause. So because I love to dance, our dependent clause, cross out that word, and now we just have I love to dance, exclamation point. Next time, we're going to look at sentences in pairs and short paragraphs to learn how to fix these errors in context, so when they're not just on their own. And then we'll do the same with authentic materials when we look at those later. All right, thanks.